So this is what we do. We compete mostly with gallium arsenide. And this is where my title and change in industry. When we started the company, everything in RF was gallium arsenide. We started selling mixers against gallium arsenide. We started selling switches against gallium arsenide. We then got into the handset business and every gallium arsenide company was desperate to prove we were wrong. Why? Because gas fabs largely fill themselves up on switches. Switches are big area things. Eight PAs are not. PAs are mostly one HBT and then you, you do an incredible spaghetti of components around the queen bee and you make a great PA. But you don't put much on there. You just make transistors. So to keep a fab full, and fabs don't run well half full. They don't run well third full. They are incredibly expensive. They're all fixed cost. You have to keep them full or you can't stay competitive. Most gas fab companies filled up their fabs on switches. So a CMOS switch was a serious existential threat. We had CEOs from Skyworks, from RFMD going into our customers. We saw them coming out and the customer was telling us, you know, those guys are in here. They just dropped their price by 50%. They said your stuff will never work. They said it's never going to be reliable. Don't rely on a startup company. And my response was, if they're that sure of how bad we are, why did they just drop their price by 50%? <laughs> hmm? And those companies stuck with us. Today, those companies now say we're the biggest RFSOI switch companies in the world. Why? Because they stole all of our intellectual property and they copied it. Okay, that's for the courts to settle. But the point is the gas guys are moving to CMOS. And they're closing their fabs. RFMD just sold the huge Filtronics gas fab that they bought five years ago. They just closed it. Most of the gas guys, if they're not in optical electronics, which prints money for them, the fabs are closing, which means all the other stuff. We're squeezing them out from the bottom, and gallium nitride is squeezing them out from the top. You want a power amp? Really? If you really want a power amp, you're going to use gallium arsenide? Most of our customers are saying, not for us. We're going to gallium nitride on the power side, maybe the LNA, if we have a 50 volt, 50 watt switch, we'll use gallium nitride. So it's going to be a gallium nitride and RFSOI world. We invented RFSOI. We put it in production. We didn't invent it. Guy up the road at uh, Rockwell actually invented silicon on sapphire in 1963. But we perfected it, we invented it in the commercial sense. And we put it in the market and we spent three quarters of a billion dollars doing it. And that is the, basically the story of the entrepreneurial experience here. This is technologically a work of art. It's unbelievable how hard it is to make an HBT and how good they are. But they're simply not going to compete with CMOS PAs. Why? Because CMOS PAs can be integrated with CMOS switches and CMOS tuning elements and CMOS other things in the RF front end and all the power supplies and all the digital logic, it's all going on a single chip. And I challenge you to find any time in this history of this industry where a module solution lasted against an integrated solution. Let's see. How did Seymour Cray make big, fast computers? That's right, discrete transistors on copper boards with water running through it. And what is, how do you do a supercomputer today? CMOS with hundreds or thousands of microprocessors, all made in CMOS, cool enough that you don't need water cooling. There's no way you, that Seymour Cray was a handcrafted, essentially a big module. CMOS wiped it out. CMOS wiped out IBM in the, in the hardware business. CMOS wipes out everything because it can integrate. So as we scale these channels, we get more and more GM. We can do all these other things and basically we changed the industry because once we shipped that one billionth and then two billionth chips and then went public so every, all our competitors could see just how penetrated we were into all these markets, they literally within months had switched to SOI. Just like Andy Grove did back in 1983 when he said, I'll never use CMOS. Or the, I mean you see this throughout history. There's actually a recorded member of the board of directors of the Standard Oil Company, the most powerful company and the richest man ever in the United States. And he had a board member that said, 
There's no oil west of the Mississippi. I'll drink every drop. Two months later, Spindlecop came in and doubled world oil production with one oil well and found the great oil fields of the southern United States. So just because somebody who's already in the industry is saying you can't do it, that's actually, that's actually, you have to hear that if you're going to be a successful entrepreneur. I was fortunate enough to be mentored by a man named Bernie Vondersmith. He was the, the, the founding CEO of Xilinx, and you guys, the FPGA company. I met him the afternoon Xilinx was going public the next morning. He had bankers coming and going. He had lawyers coming and going. He had a COO coming and going. Everybody was, wanted a piece of Bernie. He spent two hours because he used to run RCA laboratories. And he, when he saw what we had, he said, Ron, if you really fix silicon on sapphire, you've got something. But everybody in the world is going to tell you this will never work because it didn't work for them. But don't be fooled. The risk protects you. I literally, I get a chill saying that today because that was a driving force in my thinking for Peregrine for the next 20 years. I thought this guy is one of the stalwarts of the industry. He created CMOS at RCA. He sent it to Japan. The whole fabulous business model came from Bertie von der Schmidt. He developed color television under RCA. The man was, is just one of the great unsung heroes of the industry. And here he is telling me risk protects you. I thought risk was a four letter word. I thought there's, what goes with risk? Risk avoidance, risk control, risk management, risk analysis, not risk embracement. Anybody ever heard that phrase? I, until Bernie told me that. But he said, here's why. Because if you're onto something, your biggest concern should be that there's a, there is a big company with more resources who's onto the same thing. And if they really believe in it like you do, they're going to clobber you. You actually have to have them saying this will never work so that they don't throw those resources at it. Gives you the time to put all the barriers to production behind you and in front of them, and then you can compete with the big guys. So if, you, if any decision you make does not include a substantial element of risk, you should run away from it. Because it's probably uh, essentially a poison path for you.